Karen Mackey, I'm the Diabetes Specialist Dietitian for Royal Surrey County Hospital. I'm just putting a short clip together for those who've been diagnosed with gestational diabetes and those who are doing their weak blood glucose monitoring to ascertain how the body's coping with carbohydrates and that. I'm going to start with just talking about healthy eating because obviously this is fundamental for our health. Starting with fruits and vegetables, we know this is a really important part of our diet because it provides us with fiber, with antioxidants, nutrients, vitamins and minerals. So try and focus a little bit more on the vegetables because these won't affect your glucose levels. Um, so focus more on vegetables and when it comes to fruit, they do contain natural sugars, so just watch the quantity of fruit. Obviously if you enjoy a lot of fruit and you're starting to get raised glucose levels, may be helpful to start reducing the quantities that you're having. But generally, a handful of fruit, being a portion, and you can have up to two of those a day, as long as they're spread out and not all together in one go. The next group is your protein. So this is your meat, fish, beans, lentils, eggs. They're really important for the immune system, for tissue repair, for all aspects of our body processes, actually. So including two to three portions of these a day and trying to keep to the lean options. The next one is the dairy. So these are our calcium containing foods. They include cheese, milk and yogurt. Trying to include two to three of these a day as well. Obviously if you don't like dairy or you avoid the dairy products, just make sure the alternatives do contain calcium. The last group that we're going to talk about for healthy eating is going to be the fat group. So fats are still really important as part of a balanced diet. Just keep to the healthier fats. So they include things like avocados, olives, nuts, um, your, any sort of rapeseed or olive oils, um, sunflower oils. Just watch the quantity, but it's still good to include this as part of a healthy diet. The other group that I'm going to talk about is your starchy foods. So these are bread, rice, pasta, potato. They contain carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are all those foods that are made up of glucose. So during digestion, this gets absorbed into the bloodstream and then needs to be transferred to the cells where it can be used for energy. And this is where insulin comes in. Insulin acts as a key to allow that glucose to pass from the blood into the cells where it can be used for energy. Often during pregnancy, um, the body becomes more resistant to insulin and this can make this process a lot slower and, and more difficult to manage. And as a result, some people may find that their glucose levels are going up. If you have a large amount of carbohydrates, you may find your glucose levels will peak a little bit higher and it will take longer for that process of clearing the bloodstream to take place. So when it comes to carbohydrates, we do focus a little bit more on your portions because obviously the larger the portion, the higher the glucose is likely to get. It also helps to think about what type of carbohydrates you're having. If you have a very processed carbohydrate like white bread or white flours, they tend to take a, a, a shorter time to digest because they're quite processed. If you've got more of the whole grain options, they are going to take longer to digest because there is more, more breakdown necessary before you can absorb the glucose. So try and go for the whole grain options where possible and then just watch the portions. When it comes to starches, you can have about a quarter of your plate of starch. So your potato, rice, pasta, a quarter of your plate is carbohydrates, quarter plate is protein, and half a plate of vegetables is a good guide when you're looking at your portion control. If you're having larger portions and you're getting green results, you're within range, there's no problems with your glucose levels, there's no reason to change anything as yet. If your levels start rising and get into the reds, well, that's the time to start thinking about your portions. It also, it also um, helps if you think about the amount of carbohydrates you're having in a meal in terms of the different sources of carbohydrate. So if you have a sandwich with a yogurt, with fruit, they all contain um, carbohydrates. So your yogurt contains natural sugars, your fruit contains natural sugars. They're all carbohydrate foods. So just watch what you include together. If you find your glucose levels are going up, you might find it easier to have your sandwich and then a few, la few hours later than having your fruit or your yogurt. Breakfasts are probably the most difficult time of the day to manage. Our body's more resistant to insulin at this time. And things that can work is having things like porridge. So if you have the rolled oats or jumbo oats, they tend to take longer to digest and can help with blood glucose control. Avoid instant ones, they don't take that long to digest and can actually cause a peak in your glucose levels. 
Avoiding most cereals is probably a good idea. If you're managing with what you're having at the moment, don't worry about it. But if you find your levels are rising, it could be down to the cereal you're having. Even something like wheat bix, which is probably whole grain, does, take, um, does cause your glucose levels to go up in most cases. So trying to avoid most cereals is a good idea. Try and stick to oats. An alternative would be to have whole grain bread. So if you have a slice of toast and you have protein included with that, Protein takes longer to digest, so it's going to slow the absorption of your carbohydrates. So you could have a slice of toast, whole grain toast, with either peanut butter or egg on that, and it does help to control the levels a little bit more. Obviously, if you are still having difficulties with your blood glucose control and you've made a few tweaks to your diet, it may be time to just ask for a call using your app and someone will be in touch with you. The midwives and the nurses and the dietitian are all looking in at the app so we can give you a, shout, give you a call if there is any need. Um, thinking about fruit juice as well, if you are on a supplement like an iron supplement, they often say have vitamin C with that. If you are drinking fruit juice, it doesn't take long to absorb the sugars from that because it's a liquid. So try and go for a whole fruit instead. So you could go for a satsuma or you could go for a kiwi. High vitamin C, they will still help with the absorption. If you have any queries, please just ask. Use your app, please, in the comments section, put down as much information about the food and drink that you're having so that we can assess that and support you um, with any comments that we can send your way if we need to. All the best and good luck.